at first glance, it didn't look like a particularly inviting place for an archaeological site. But then we got out and we started walking up and down and looking at the, the piles of peat. And within just a few minutes, we started seeing clusters of human skeletal material. In a muddy pond in Florida, an 8,000-year-old secret was unearthed, a human skull with its brain miraculously preserved inside. This discovery promised to connect us to our most ancient ancestors. But when its DNA was sequenced, the connection was broken. The genetic code was a ghost, an anomaly that didn't fit anywhere in the known story of humanity. What many overlooked is that this isn't just an old skull, it's terrifying proof of a lost human lineage, a population that existed and then vanished, leaving behind a biological question mark that haunts scientists to this day. A routine day gone wrong. You see, in Florida, finding a large rock is a rare event. The soil is mostly sand and peat. Steve, intrigued and slightly annoyed, shut down the roaring engine. The sudden silence was almost deafening, broken only by the chirping of insects in the nearby brush. He climbed down from his cab, his boots sinking into the damp earth, and walked over to the freshly dug trench. Peering in, he saw what the bucket had scraped against. It wasn't a rock, it was bone white, curved, and unmistakably human. A skull. Stained dark brown by the peat, it stared up at him from its muddy grave. Steve reached down and carefully lifted it. The bone felt strangely light, almost fragile. An immediate sharp chill ran down his spine, a feeling completely out of place in the oppressive 95-degree heat. He later described it as a deep, primal sense of unease, as if he had woken something that had been sleeping for a very, very long time. This was no ordinary discovery. He placed the skull gently on the ground and backed away. His first thought, like anyone's would be, was that he'd stumbled upon a crime scene, a modern one. He immediately called his supervisor, who ordered all construction to a halt. Within the hour, the quiet construction site was swarming with flashing lights and sheriff's deputies. They cordoned off the area with yellow tape, transforming the muddy pit into an official investigation zone. The officers who arrived assumed they were dealing with a potential foul play case. The thing nobody tells you is that when you find human remains, the first 24 hours are a frantic race against time to preserve evidence. But this scene was different. The dark, acidic water of the bog, the way the bones were settled deep in the peat, it didn't feel recent. The local coroner was called in. As he examined the skull and other bone fragments Steve's backhoe had disturbed, a puzzled look crossed his face. To put it mildly, things weren't adding up. The bones were too dark, too soft, and had a strange texture. They had absorbed the color of the bog and their edges crumbled slightly to the touch. This wasn't the remains of someone who had vanished last year or even last decade. This was something else entirely. This was old, ancient. The local authorities realized they were out of their depth. This wasn't a case for detectives, it was a case for historians and scientists. The find was a complete accident, a one in a billion chance. Had the housing developers decided to build the pond just 100 feet to the left or right, this ancient cemetery might have remained hidden forever, its secrets locked away beneath the peat. But fate, or perhaps the ghost of an ancient people, had other plans. That single jarring thud of a backhoe against bone had just cracked open one of the most significant and deeply unsettling archaeological sites in North American history. What began as a routine construction job was about to become a journey into a lost world. The Bog's Dark Secret. With the police investigation at a standstill, the call went out to Florida State University. The case landed on the desk of a young, ambitious anthropologist named Dr. Glenn Doran. When he first arrived at the Windover site, he wasn't expecting much. He later recalled his first impression, just a scummy pond in the middle of nowhere but that feeling of indifference wouldn't last. What many overlooked was the unique chemistry of the pond itself. The water was nearly neutral in its pH balance, and the peat at the bottom created an anaerobic, or oxygen-free, environment. This combination acted as a perfect natural preservative, essentially pickling anything that fell into it. As Dr. Doran and his team began their initial survey, they realized the sheer scale of what lay hidden. This wasn't just one skull, it was an entire cemetery, submerged and forgotten by time. But how do you excavate a burial ground that's completely underwater? The task was immense. 
Any wrong move could send clouds of silt through the water, destroying delicate artifacts and erasing priceless information. The team devised a bold and unprecedented plan. They decided to drain the entire pond. They installed a grid of 150 well points, powerful pumps that began sucking the dark water out of the ground. For weeks, the pumps ran nonstop, day and night, pulling over 700 gallons of water every minute. The noise was constant, a mechanical heartbeat in the silent landscape. Slowly, painstakingly, the water level began to drop. As the muddy earth emerged, the true nature of the site was revealed. Skeletons began to appear, one after another laid to rest in the peat. They found men, women, and children from infants to the elderly. In total, the remains of over 168 individuals were uncovered. The most shocking fact is that many of the bodies had been deliberately staked to the bottom of the pond with sharpened wooden poles. This wasn't a haphazard burial. It was a careful, deliberate ritual designed to keep the bodies from floating to the surface. It showed a complex understanding of their environment and a deep-seated set of beliefs about the afterlife. Many of the skeletons were found curled in a fetal position as if sleeping. Even more incredibly, they were often wrapped in fabric. These weren't just rags, they were intricately woven textiles made from plant fibers like sebal palm. When these fabrics were later analyzed, they were confirmed to be the oldest, most complex woven materials ever found in the Americas, dating back over 8,000 years. This single discovery shattered the long-held belief that people of this era, the Archaic period, were simple nomadic hunter-gatherers. These people had looms. They had advanced weaving technology. They were a settled, sophisticated community. And you can see this everywhere at the site. One skeleton belonged to a teenage boy who had suffered from spina bifida, a severe congenital disorder. He would have been unable to walk or care for himself yet he had lived to be about 15 years old. This meant his community had cared for him his entire life. This was not a society that abandoned its weak, it was a society built on compassion. Another woman's remains showed evidence of a healed broken arm, set so perfectly it could have only been done by someone with a deep knowledge of medicine. They were uncovering not just bones, but the story of a people, a story that was far richer and more complex than anyone had ever imagined but the most mind-bending discovery was yet to come, hidden inside the skulls themselves. A perfectly preserved mystery. As the excavation continued, the team grew accustomed to incredible finds, but nothing could have prepared them for what they discovered next. Inside 91 of the skulls nestled within the ancient bone was preserved brain tissue, shrunken and dark, but anatomically intact. This should have been impossible. Brain tissue is one of the first things to decompose after passing away, a fatty, watery organ that typically liquefies within a few years, let alone a few millennia. Yet here were brains, over 8,000 years old, so well preserved you could still see the folds and creases of the cerebral cortex. The scientific community was stunned. Dr. Dorn and his team had stumbled upon the largest and oldest collection of ancient human brains ever found. The preservation was so perfect that it opened up a whole new frontier of research. For the first time, scientists could study the physical structure of brains from our deep ancestral past. One skull, in particular, stood out. It belonged to a woman who was around 45 years old when she passed on. Her skeleton told the story of a hard life. Arthritis in her spine suggested years of physical labor, and her teeth were worn down from a coarse diet. But it was her brain that held the real secret. It was almost perfectly whole. The team handled it with a reverence usually reserved for crown jewels. This wasn't just an artifact, it was the preserved mind of an ancient human being. The opportunity was too great to pass up. They decided to attempt something that had never been successfully done on a specimen this old, extract its DNA. Getting a clean DNA sample from ancient remains is notoriously difficult. The genetic material degrades over time breaking into smaller and smaller fragments until it's unreadable. Worse, it can be easily contaminated by the DNA of every person who handles it. But the Wendover brains were different. Because they had been sealed inside the skulls, protected by the oxygen-free peat, their DNA was remarkably pristine. Scientists were able to extract long, readable strands of mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA. 
This type of DNA is passed down exclusively from mother to child, making it an invaluable tool for tracing ancient human migration patterns. You see, all Native American populations are known to trace their ancestry back to one of five major mitochondrial DNA lineages, or haplogroups, known as A, B, C, D, and X. Every ancient human remain ever found in the Americas had fit neatly into one of these five categories. It was a foundational rule of American anthropology. The lab began the sequencing process. Everyone waited, expecting the woman's DNA to confirm what they already knew to place her firmly within one of the five known groups. The results came back, and the rule was broken. The woman's DNA didn't match A, B, C, D, or X. It was something else, something unknown, a genetic lineage that had never been seen before. The scientists ran the test again, thinking it was a mistake contamination, an error in the process. The results came back the same. This wasn't an error, it was real. They had found a ghost in the human genome. The implications were staggering and to put it mildly, deeply horrifying. The ghost in the genome. The discovery of a new unidentified genetic lineage sent shockwaves through the scientific community. It was like finding a new primary color. It simply wasn't supposed to exist. To confirm the finding, they tested the DNA from two other individuals from the Wendover site, a man and another woman who were buried in different parts of the pond and showed no close familial relation to the first woman. The most shocking fact is that both of them carried the exact same unknown genetic marker. This wasn't a one-off mutation, it was a characteristic of a population. They had discovered an entire lost branch of the human family tree a lineage that existed 8,000 years ago in Florida, and then at some point was completely wiped out. It had vanished from the genetic record so thoroughly that no trace of it exists in any modern or ancient population ever studied. This is what was so horrifying to the scientists. It wasn't the discovery of something new, it was the implication of a profound loss. An entire group of people, an entire human story erased from history. Where did they come from? Where did they go? Did they die out? Were they absorbed into other groups? Or did something more sinister happen? The questions were endless, and the answers were non-existent. The Wendover people left behind their bodies, their tools, and their incredible textiles, but their genetic legacy is a ghost. One lead researcher, speaking off the record, said, It's like something left a footprint and then just disappeared from the face of the earth. Many people are crazy about ancient alien theories or lost civilizations like Atlantis, but the truth revealed by the Wendover DNA is far more real and far more terrifying. It's the concrete scientific proof that entire populations of our human ancestors could just vanish. The mystery didn't stop with the DNA. Further analysis of the woman's perfectly preserved brain revealed more unsettling anomalies. Using advanced imaging technology, scientists mapped its structure. They found subtle but significant deviations from the modern human brain. The two hemispheres were slightly more asymmetrical than what is considered normal today. Her frontal lobes, the area of the brain associated with planning and complex thought, were a bit larger than expected. These weren't signs of a disorder, they were just different. Was this a unique trait of this lost population? Did their brains function differently from our own? Could these slight structural differences have given them a different way of perceiving the world? We can never know. The brain is there, a silent physical object, but the consciousness it once held is gone forever, taking its secrets with it. The Wendover Bog had given science a priceless gift, a window into a lost world, but it also delivered a chilling message. The story of humanity is not a straight line, it's a messy, complicated tree with countless branches, many of which have been broken off and lost to time. We are the descendants of the survivors, but the thing nobody tells you is that we are haunted by the ghosts of those who didn't make it. The Wendover people are one of those ghosts, their story a stark reminder of how fragile our existence truly is. The Wendover Bog asks a terrifying question. How many other lost human histories are still buried beneath our feet waiting to be found? Let us know your thoughts below. And if you want to explore more unsettling truths about our past, make sure to like and subscribe.